What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you the three things I always do when starting a blank project in Cubase Pro, so let's get right to it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is project duration. So if I go ahead and zoom out my entire project, just like I did here, let me go ahead and close off these side panels. You're going to see that you see 85 bars inside of the project. Now, when you open up a blank project, if you go to project, then project setup, sometimes Cubase starts you off with about 30 minutes worth of project duration, which ends up being that you now have 865 tracks. And in reality, I only need maybe a couple hundred or maybe just a hundred because I, I want to create a short song. Maybe it's just a three minute song or so. And it gets a little bit annoying that when I zoom out, I have to zoom out to 865. It may seem like something not too important, but in your workflow, this sometimes does interrupt the workflow. So let me show you what I would do. So let's say I have an instrument track here. I'm going to go ahead and create just an Omnisphere track. So here I have my Omnisphere track. I'm going to go ahead and close that and I am going to create a couple of MIDI uh, regions here. So let's go ahead and just load this up with some MIDI regions. So let's say this is my project. Maybe this is a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and delete this last one. Let's say this is my project and I zoom out and notice how you could still see 865 bars but this is the entire duration of my piece. It's a little bit annoying to have to zoom out and then zoom out to all of this. So then when I go here and let's say I wanna zoom into this section, this is bar number 92, I would have to zoom in just to this section. So what I would do is I would go into project, project setup, and then I would actually just put three minutes. So the way you read this is, this is milliseconds, this is seconds, this is minutes, and this is hours. I'm gonna go ahead and put three minutes and notice how all of a sudden the entire project shrinks. So if I press Shift F, I believe that's the shortcut that comes default with Cubase Pro to zoom out your entire project. You're going to see that now I only see three minutes worth of Cubase project. Instead of seeing 865 measures, I'm only going to get three minutes. So if I go all the way to the end, you're going to see that here if I click and I put time code, it's going to say 254. So I'm going to go back to bars and beats here. And this is roughly my three minutes worth of music. Again, it's just a little bit of a pain for me to have to zoom out and then have to zoom back into uh, whatever particular section that I'm working on. So that's one of the things that I do before starting any blank slate in my Cubase project. The next thing we're going to talk about is control room. So control room is something that if you're not using, I would definitely recommend using. So you find control room by going to this right panel here and then clicking where it says CR. Now this I believe is only available in the Cubase Pro version. So if you don't have the Cubase Pro version, you won't see this. But this is the control room and essentially this is like having an external master control for your Cubase project. So the reason why I like to use control room is because in the insert section, I'm able to put plugins in here that won't interfere with my master mix at the end of a project. So for example, I use sound ID reference and this is from Sonarworks. This calibrates my speakers to have the most flat response so that I'm able to hear and check my mix with the most accuracy. Since I don't have a professionally acoustically treated room, this is the perfect plugin for me because now it's going to flatten out all the frequencies um, with the calibration that I've done with my speakers using a calibration mic from Sonarworks. And then also I can monitor other things like, for example, the left and right levels. Here I can see the loudness using LUFs, LUFs. And then here I have a wave scope so I could see um, my tracks essentially kind of like how I see it here, but in peak form, in waveform. I like to have this as I'm referencing my tracks because again, if I bounce my tracks, instead of putting it, let's say I open up the mixer window and here we see a uh, stereo out. Any inserts I put in the stereo out, it's gonna be bounced with the inserts that I put in here. 
So instead of me putting it in here and by mistake forgetting to disable any plugins that I was using for monitoring, I would put it instead in my control room because this will never be bounced out with the actual mix. So if you do not use control room, there are a lot of advantages to use it, but this is one of the main reasons why I use it. You can also, if you have, let's say, uh, two monitors hooked up to your system, you'll see an A and a B. So you can actually flip between your first set of speakers and your second set of speakers, which is also pretty cool. But in my case, I only have one and I mainly just use it for these two plugins so that I can reference my mixes without it affecting it when I bounce out the track. And then the last thing, which may seem very basic, but I'm gonna explain why this is important, is if you go to studio and go into studio setup, it's changing my buffer size. So the reason why this is very important is for two things. If I am, let's say, recording a live instrument, I need to make sure that I have the lowest possible buffer size that my computer can handle, which I usually record on 256. So let's say I'm doing guitar tracks so that it can have the least amount of latency. Don't underlook this. This is very important when recording because you want to make sure that when you're playing, you're getting instant feedback so that you have a better performance. But also when I'm doing things like film scoring work, I want to make sure that I raise this and I actually raise it up to 768 because since I use a separate machine, I have a, a separate PC that has all of my string sounds, my choir sounds, percussion sounds, brass, all of that stuff. So in order to avoid that input delay, I need to raise my buffer size so that the computers have enough time to talk to each other and reduce that input delay. So I'm constantly changing the buffer size of my projects depending on what I'm doing, whether it's film score or I'm recording a live instrument, like for example, my guitar. I wanna make sure that I have the right buffer size. Now, of course, I have my template set up to have most of these things already done, but there are times where I just want to open Cubase and I wanna start completely fresh so that I'm able to come up with new sounds or maybe I don't wanna use what I have in my template. I just want to start with a fresh palette. I have a different sound in mind. So it's a perfect place to start. And I'm gonna go ahead and put one more bonus tip in this video. I like to start my project so that I can see zero time code when I'm on measure one. So notice how when I hit measure one, it says zero, 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 zero. And the way you do this is by going to measure one and it doesn't matter if it has negative numbers or maybe the project's off by like two seconds. You're gonna go to one, you're gonna go into project, you're gonna go to where it says set time code at cursor position. So here, let's say it was delayed by two seconds. That means that now in measure one, you're gonna hit no here. In measure one, it's gonna be at two seconds. And let's say you want it to be zero. You're gonna to wanna to go here to project and then set time code at cursor. You can also make this a key command. And quickly, if you do not know how to do key commands, you're gonna to go to edit, go to key commands, and then go to the same place that you would find that inside of Cubase. So you'd find project. So let's say this folder structure, you're gonna to go to project here, and then you're gonna go down to set time code. I have it for option T and the way you assign it is by highlighting this, hitting the command or hotkey you want it to be, option T, and then you hit assign. Once you do that, you're gonna go to measure one and I'm gonna hit option T. I'm gonna go ahead and set this at zero everything and then hit okay. And then here again, I'm gonna hit no. And now at one, measure one, it's gonna be zero, 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 zero. And the reason why you want that is because let's say you want to create a track and you want it to be exactly two minutes. You're gonna want bar one where you start to be zero so that you can accurately time where those two minutes are. So for example, two minutes would be somewhere around here at bar 61. If you have any questions throughout this video, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Don't forget to check out the links in my description. If you are completely new to Cubase and you wanna learn how to use Cubase from a technical standpoint, the course will essentially teach you how to use Cubase from the inside out and know where things are. So when you open up Cubase, you can come in and play with confidence and be able to master your sessions. Don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.